Hey, what's up, YouTube? The day is finally here. The Electra Jailbreak for iOS 11.3.x has been released, so massive props to Coolstar and the entire Electra Jailbreak team. Now, the official Electra Jailbreak site, as well as a full written tutorial of the jailbreak process, as well as all the download links, will be available on besttechinfo.com. The links to this site will be down in the description and in your cards right now on this video. So before we begin, don't forget to subscribe and ding that notification bell to be updated anytime new jailbreak guides, tutorials, or just general content is released from us on the channel. And of course, don't forget to give this video a huge thumbs up if you are excited to jailbreak your devices. Now before we continue any further, you will in fact need a computer to jailbreak your device, either Mac or Windows, it really doesn't matter, both work perfectly fine. So in any case, pick up your computer and head to besttechinfo.com. Like I said earlier, there will not only be a complete jailbreak guide there, but there will also be this video embedded and all of the download links and information you need to know. Alright, so let's talk a little bit about this jailbreak. First and foremost, let's talk about support. So we have really great news regarding this. It will support all iOS devices, so as long as you're running iOS 11.2 to 11.3.1. It unfortunately won't work on iOS 11.4, as the main exploit used in this jailbreak is patched in 11.4, and it won't work in 11.4.1 or any iOS 12 beta. Now this jailbreak, just like the previous versions of Electra, is semi-untethered, meaning we are going to install a jailbreak utility, which will actually perform the jailbreak process on device. Now you will need a computer to install this utility initially, but after that you will only need to utilize the utility if you want to re-enable your jailbreak. So it's really not that bad of a workaround. This application will also be signed for 7 days, so you have 7 days to use the application before you need to re-sign it with the computer. Again, this self-signing process was first introduced in iOS 9, meaning we can sideload applications without a paid developer account for 7 days with a free Apple ID. And the reason why this is implemented is it would require another exploit in order to get the jailbreak, but this is a really quick and easy workaround that's really not too much of a hassle, and thus we're able to get jailbreaks a lot quicker using this method. Alright, so I'm just going to head into the settings app now. I'm going to go to general and about. So you guys can see here, I'm currently on iOS 11.3.1. There we go, once it finally focuses. I'm just going to go ahead and put that guy back real fast. So there's only a couple things we're going to need to do before we begin. You're obviously going to need to get all the install files. So we're going to need Cydia Impactor. You're going to need the latest version of iTunes. And third and foremost, you're going to need the actual Electra Jailbreak IPA file. Now again, all these links will be down in the description of this video for you guys to easily grab. So before we head to the computer, we can go ahead and get this out of the way. You're obviously going to need to connect your device to your computer. Mine is just connected right here via my dock and the lightning cable. And of course, you're going to have to trust the connection, enter your passcode, and make sure your phone shows up in iTunes. All right, I'm going to head over to the computer and I'll be right back. All right, guys, here we are on my computer. As you guys can see, my phone is showing up within iTunes under the summary tab. This is all we need to see here that the iPhone is appearing within iTunes. So now we're just going to go ahead and download a few things. Of course, all the download links are found on Best Tech Info. You have the Electra IPA, you have Impactor, and you have the latest version of iTunes. Now, speaking of iTunes real fast, the only thing I would suggest before doing this is making a backup of your data just in case anything goes wrong. Anyway, like I said, go ahead and download all the files directly to your computer, and for simplicity purposes, I just went ahead and threw them on my desktop. So here they are. Here's the two major files that we need. We're going to need Cydia Impactor, and we're going to need the Electra 11.3.1 IPA file. So with all that in place, we're actually going to quit out of iTunes before we begin this process. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up Impactor, and it looks like it opened up on another one of my displays. Anyway, here we are. I'll just throw that in the center. As you guys can see, my iPhone is recognized right here. Now you just want to make sure that your iPhone shows up right here under your names. Mine is ICU Eyes, I guess. I forgot the D. Anyway, my phone is in Cydia Impactor. Now all we are going to do is drag the Electra IPA file directly onto Cydia Impactor. And now we're going to enter our iTunes Apple ID. Now this application was created by Sorek, who is the developer of Cydia, the third-party app store used to install tweaks and packages, so this application is from a very trustworthy source. What I'm getting at is your Apple ID is not going to be jeopardized, any of its security is not going to be 
in harm's way by using this application. This is just a third party application that is for both Windows and Mac. I'm of course on my Mac right here, but the same process can be done on a Windows based computer. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter my Apple ID. Now, for simplicity purposes, you may want to create a second throwaway Apple ID, not necessarily for security, but one where two factor authentication is disabled. Now, it's not like you can't use your Apple ID with two factor authentication, but it adds one more step. And I'll explain what I'm talking about here in just a second. Again, more information about this can be found on the written tutorial. So this is my throwaway Apple ID that I'm using that does not have two factor authentication. I'm just going to go ahead and click OK and enter my password. Now, after that, the application is going to be signed directly to my iPhone. And after this step is done, the rest of the jailbreak process can be done directly on device. Now, if you actually got a warning here or a prompt asking for a secondary password, again, that is because you have two factor authentication enabled. You can obtain this password from Apple's site directly. But like I said, it's almost easier to just disable two factor authentication before attempting to jailbreak. All right, so that is pretty much it for this part of the video, and I'm going to head back over to my iPhone now. All right, guys, here we are back at my iPhone 6S Plus. Now, if I navigate over to the second page of applications, you can see that the Electra Jailbreak utility is right there on my home screen. Now, if I go to try and open it, you'll notice that an untrusted developer prompt appears. You will have to head over to the Settings app. We're going to navigate down to General. Actually, it's already in General, but again, on the home screen of the settings app, we're going to go to general, navigate down to device management, select our developer account or our Apple ID. Excuse me, you don't need a paid developer account to do this. I just use my free Apple ID. We're just going to trust our Apple ID right here. Click trust. And now we can go ahead and back to the home screen and navigate to the Electra application. Now, when we open it up, as you guys can see, this is the new user interface of the utility. It looks pretty similar to the previous one, just a few minor updates. Honestly, I really like it. It looks pretty sweet. You have the ability to enable and disable tweaks. There's credits, and you can even set your nonce if you have blobs saved for your device. Now, I'll have to get into that in a whole entire another video, but for this video, let's go ahead and jailbreak and see exactly what happens. Now, one of two things is going to happen. Your device is going to entirely reboot, meaning the jailbreak process was unsuccessful, but not to fear. All we have to do is wait for the phone to boot back up and reattempt this process. Now, ideally, you want your phone to just respring and enter the jailbroken state. Also, Coolstar noted for iOS 11.3.x users, a reboot is initially required. So let's go ahead and hit jailbreak one more time on 11.3.1 and see exactly what happens. If this doesn't work this time around, I'm going to force reboot my phone or turn it off manually and see if that helps the process. Again, this jailbreak is compatible with iOS 11.2 all the way to 11.3.1. So in theory, it should work perfectly fine on my iPhone 6S Plus right here, but it looks like it's going to go ahead and reboot one more time. Let's see if the city icon is present. It doesn't look like it got through the entire jailbreak process. Now Tanner was having issues on his own personal iPhone 6 as well, so apologies for the delay in this video. All right, so my device is back up and unfortunately there is no Cydia icon. So with that being the case, I'm gonna go ahead and manually reboot my phone to see if that helps anything. So I'm just gonna hold the power button down and slide to power down. Again, this remount issue should only be a problem for users on iOS 11.3 and iOS 11.3.1. Users on iOS 11.2 all the way up to iOS 11.2.6 should not have this problem at all. Anyway, it looks like my phone is off, so I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it back on and wait for it to boot up one last time. All right, guys, so it is back online. It's notifying me there is no SIM card installed, but I'm gonna go ahead and try the jailbreak process one last time to see if this helps. You know what, for just to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in airplane mode, see if that helps anything with its success rate. It's going to wait 11 more seconds since my phone just turned on. Again, this feature right here is pretty awesome. It's going to wait, I think, 30 seconds after the device initially booted up in order to increase the exploit's success rate. So again, we're here at one out of three. Hopefully it will work this time. This is like the fourth or fifth attempt. Oh, nice, we got a new screen saying we're starting, so it looks like it's actually going to work this time. So if you guys are in a reboot loop and it just isn't working, go ahead and try to manually reboot your device and see if that works the second time around. 
That is the first time I've ever seen anything like this, but now let's see what happens. All right, so no city icon yet. Let's try yet again. I'm just going to wait a couple seconds. And you know what? Let's just click jailbreak. It should wait. Yeah, 23 seconds now. So it's going to go ahead and do its thing. I'm just going to wait 20 seconds and I'll be right back. All right, here we go for the fifth or sixth time. Again, this initial jailbreak process is probably only going to be the one affected. Re-enabling the jailbreak shouldn't be this hard. There we go. Two out of three, and now it's installing Cydia, so that seems to be the key, guys. If you're having any issues, just reboot your device manually, and then try to rerun this jailbreak application. Also, throwing it in airplane mode might not be that bad of an idea either. So here we go, guys. This looks like it's doing the correct process this time. It's going through a respring instead of entirely rebooting the device. So I can't wait to see what it looks like. We should just come to a home screen with the Cydia icon present. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for making it to this point in the video, and thank you for sitting through my struggles with getting this application to work. But here we are at the home screen. Now it's the moment of truth. We're going to swipe over. There we have it, guys. Cydia is finally present on my iPhone 6S Plus, running iOS 11.3.1. .1. Unable to load because we are still in airplane mode. I'm just going to give it a second to connect to Wi-Fi. And the second it does, there we go, my Wi-Fi kicked in. I'm just going to go ahead and click reload. And there we have it, guys. Cydia is now finally running on my iPhone 6S Plus. Let's go ahead and go to the change log. And if there are any available changes, we're going to go ahead and install them. So it looks like it failed to fetch from a couple resources, but it doesn't look like there's any immediate changes to install. I'm just going to go ahead and go to the sources. Now, these are the default sources that come pre-installed for you guys. This is a pretty awesome list and actually comes with a few customized ones that are directly and only available on the Electra Jailbreak. I'll get into more detail about this in a follow-up video, hopefully related to tweaks and some of the awesome packages that you can install with this jailbreak. Anyway, guys, that pretty much wraps up the jailbreaking process. You can now begin to install things on your own on iOS 11.2 to iOS 11.3.1. .1. Again, this is supported on all devices, so as long as you're running one of these compatible firmwares. And again, my device is only 16 gigabytes, and it still has 8.25 left. So it looks like the storage problem for smaller devices has also been solved before this final public release. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video and making it to the end on how to install Cydia and fully jailbreak your device. Again, if you want to stay updated on future coverage that we push out on this channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit that thumbs up button if you are excited to jailbreak your devices finally. Stay tuned as we will have some awesome new content coming out relating to this jailbreak, such as top tweak videos and such like that. We also have a written tutorial, like I've said multiple times, down below in the description of this video. Again, happy jailbreaking, and thank you so much for watching. But until next time, this is Tony, signing out.